Good morning. Welcome along everyone to today's Goalkeeper Boost webinar. Hope everyone's had a nice morning so far. Um, it's about 11 o'clock just now. So what we'll do, as always, we'll wait for a few more people to trickle in uh, and then we'll we'll make a start nice on time. Um, good morning from Edinburgh. Uh, it'd be great to see anyone who is out there pop in the chat box what area of the UK you're in. Um, great to see you. Kirsty, thanks for saying hello. Um, let us know where you are based in the UK. Um, nice to see a, a nice geographical spread. As always, as I said, uh, we're broadcasting here from Edinburgh. Uh, and good morning to you all. Morning, Paula. Thanks for popping that in the box. Um, that is fantastic. Um, what we'll do, we'll wait two minutes and then we'll make a start. Um, so if you've forgotten to get your coffee, your tea, uh, a couple of biscuits, whatever it is that you like, um, nip away. You'll have two minutes before we make a start. We'll just wait for the numbers to, to level out just a little bit. Got a great session today. Um, the key ingredients to a healthy onboarding process. I'm sure you're all aware. Um, you'd be glad to know it's not just myself that will be uh, will be on this webinar this morning. Of course, of course, we'll have the lovely Joe Wood with us as well. Uh, and I'll introduce Joe Wood in just a few moments. Um, if you're joining, I was just letting everybody know uh, we'll make a start in about two minutes time. Nip away. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Carl. Uh, morning, you. My, uh, uh, good to see you. Georgia, you're there as well. That's always reassuring. Um, so I'm joined by my colleagues, Georgia and Sammy. They'll be there in the chat box saying hello to everyone. Sunny Derbyshire. Fantastic, Lindsay. I don't think I've ever seen those two words together, but it's the first time for everything. Uh, sunny Derbyshire. That is fantastic. Um, it's pretty nice here in Edinburgh for anyone who's interested as well. Um, which also is the first time for everything. Um, great. It's about two minutes past 11 just now. Um, the numbers seem to be to be evening out. Morning, uh, Helen. Morning, Claire. Uh, good to see you all coming along again. Um, great. We'll make a start. So, uh, morning, everyone. If you're just joining, um, great to see you all along. Uh, we're in, uh, hopefully have in store for you another great session this morning uh, as part of Free Agents Bookkeeper Boost Week. Um, this morning, of course, it's Thursday, the 8th of June, and today we have a, a really, really exciting session in store. Um, the session, of course, is regarding the key ingredients uh, needed for a healthy onboarding process. Um, it's the fourth session of the week. We've got one more session tomorrow, which we'll cover off later on in the session. Uh, but today, really excited. Great, great to have you all here, uh, and we can hopefully uh, have, a, have a great session ahead as well. By way of agenda, so there's a couple of things for us to cover off. Um, we'll start, as always, with some introductions. Um, I'll let you know who I am, uh, as I've never been on a free agent webinar before. Um, I'll let you know, of course, who our lovely guest is, although I'm sure you'll all be well aware of, uh, of Joe. Um, we'll do a small bit of housekeeping, as always. We'll set the scene just a little bit to give a little bit more context as to why, why, we're, why we're all here this morning, what the session will hopefully cover off, um, and, and a few other little bits and pieces as well. We'll then get into the main discussion piece um, where we'll have uh, fantastic input, uh, insight um, and helpful tips uh, from, from Joe. And then towards the very end of the session, for anybody who would like to stay on, it'd be great to see as many people on as possible. Or I'll take you through a live demo. Uh, so always a possibility of something live going, uh, going horribly wrong. So stick around for that as well. You never know what you might see. Um, as we move through, um, first by way of introduction, morning everybody, if you're just joining us, lovely to see so many people along, great to see so many people saying hello in the chat box, and that always is a, is a lovely way to start. My name is Rob Gardner, and I am the practice onboarding manager here at Free Agent. I've been at Free Agent for three years now, and um, the team that I manage um, has a small bit of crossover, I guess, in terms of the message or the overall theme of this uh, webinar. So the team that I manage looks after the onboarding of new bookkeeping practices to the free agent partner program. So uh, a different um, a different uh, uh, life or a different area that we would exist in, but in terms of onboarding, I'm sure there'll be lots and lots of uh, uh, pieces of, of info that we can share and we can uh, we can chat about through the session as well. Um, of course, for anyone who doesn't know, or isn't fully aware of uh, what free agent is, free agent is an award-winning cloud accounting software. Uh, and we'll touch a tiny, tiny little piece on that later on in the session as well. But that's enough about myself. Um, instead, I would love to introduce my lovely uh, co-host today, which is the lovely Joe Wood. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Hi, Rob. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on today. 
It's our pleasure, Joe. It's our pleasure. We absolutely love having you on our webinars, um, and it's certainly nice to, to see you on this morning. Where, where are you uh, dialing in from this morning, Joe? So I'm in, um, not so sunny, but kind of sunny, Gravesend in Kent. So in the, in the Garden of England in the southeast. Fantastic. Good stuff. And it's great to see we seem to have lots of good weather throughout the UK just now, which hopefully is, uh, is a good omen for, for what's to come. And also uh, it, it coincides nicely with Bookkeeper Boost Week, having the sun shiny as well. So that's fantastic. Um, of course, Joe, uh, best-selling author, owner of the Six Figure Bookkeeper. Uh, you run your own practice, of course, uh, which has had some really, really impressive growth. And um, so uh, the perfect panelist to have alongside me today to chat about client on onboarding. So really, really great to have you here, Joe. Thank you for, for taking part. Um, just before we get into it, we'll cover off the housekeeping bits and pieces. Um, so yes, that famous webinar question, this webinar will be recorded. Um, as long as you're registered for the webinar, we will send out the recording to you. That'll come along early next week. Um, in terms of Zoom itself, so if you wouldn't mind, uh, please continue to chat in the chat box. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know where you're based. Um, in terms of any questions, especially any questions you might have for Joe, um, please put them in the Q&A box. It just helps to um, filter the questions from the chat. So hopefully we can put a couple of your questions to Joe and get that wonderful input. Um, morning, morning, Susanna. See you there in the chat box. Um, as always, please keep the chat polite and respectful, as you always do, which is much, much appreciated. Um, and of course, as always, in a free agent webinar, what would it be without some polls? And at the very, very end, we'll have a live demo. So anyone who would like to stick around, please, please do so. Um, of course, the last piece of housekeeping, which I'm sure is of interest as well, this session will count for one CPD point, and we will send that along to you with the recording next week. Um, so anyone who, who's out there, you'll get this information sent along to you next week by way of email. Um, that's great. That's the housekeeping ticked off. We can finally get to get to the most interesting piece, Joe. Um, so Joe, what we will... Um, Aim for today is just to give a bit of context. We'll uh, we'll split the questions or the or, or the chat into kind of three areas. So initially, we'll chat a little bit about um, overview overview of onboarding, more kind of general terms and 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 the and the concept of of good onboarding. Then we'll move through to the, the nuts and bolts of onboarding, and you know hopefully get some of your tips as to how you can have a have a successful and efficient onboarding process. And, and then towards the end. We'll chat a little bit about some of your top tips, uh, any final thoughts, uh, and that'll generally carry us through to about 12 noon. Joe, does that sound okay? Sounds great. Fantastic. Well, Joe, if we start off with, uh, I suppose, the million dollar question, and um, the question that'll hopefully give uh, a bit of context to the, to the rest of the session as well, um, why do you think it's so important to have a good onboarding process? Oh, it's, it's really all about like setting the scene and you know really getting very clear with your clients how you work and how you expect them to behave and how they're going to react and engage with you i can't tell you i mean you know just a bit of context i i have run multiple practices in my time and most of them have been absolute failures so um i i'm really honored to be a guest but just to put it out there, I'm still definitely learning. And I think we all are still learning and I still make mistakes. It just so happens that, you know, I've made so many mistakes and I try and learn from them that actually now I'm I'm doing a bit better than I was. But, you know, it, I'm not coming at it as like I'm the expert and I know, you know, I'm sure there's so many people here that will listen to things I say and then think, well, I would do it that way. And that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying this is the way I'm just going to explain how I do things and how I see things. Um, and hope hope it helps people but you know really what I've learned over the many failures is that when I've sat there in the past and said things like oh running a business would be so easy if I didn't have clients and staff and you know I mean you wouldn't have a business then but that's the kind of thing I used to say and so I think the one of my biggest learnings over time and what's really helped me to you know have some success has been taking um ownership of the mistakes I've made and definitely definitely one of my biggest learnings has been the more I input the more I focus on onboarding the better results I have and it was something that I never gave the time to I I was always so busy doing the work and wanted to get on with the work that I didn't have time to give this thought of how it would look and 
how I wanted it to look. I didn't even know that, you know, I could choose. And that's one of the biggest things I think we don't realize that we get to design what our client experience is like. We feel sometimes, and I definitely have done this in the past, basically let them decide what my onboarding looked like and was very much led by, well, when they contact me, I will do this and I will do that. So it's about taking ownership and making sure that you realize that when things go wrong in your business and things don't work out right, there's something that you've not done and you don't have to beat yourself up, but just use it as an opportunity to go, right, how could that have gone better? How can I create a system or a process so that mistake, that problem never happens again? And onboarding is our opportunity to really get clear with our client, this is how we work. And this is how we want you to work. And I start this process even before that in like marketing and sales and the discovery call that I have with them. I'm setting the scene constantly. And actually, partly what I do now, I mean, and I've had some, I have had a bit of hate, especially from some kind of when I've explained my onboarding process to um, some of the accountancy, you know, industry and I put it in a publication or whatever. I had some people tell me that I was a bit like Hitler, that I was like, I treat my clients like dogs and <laughs> all these horrible things, um, which is not true. I'm, I'm, I just set very strict boundaries and, I, and that's fine. If people don't want to, that's also fine. But this is how I do it because I, I'm setting the scene and letting them know this is how I work and this is how I would like you to work. And if this doesn't work for you, and this is the big thing, if this is not how you want to work, then that's fine. And I'm not the bookkeeper for you. And that's absolutely fine. And you've got every opportunity because business owners get to choose how they work and how they design their businesses too. But I don't think it's fair if I never brought it up beforehand, then they sign the proposal. And then I'm like, right, now you're on my training schedule kind of thing. They That would not be very, very fair. So Now I just let them, you know, know in the sales process, I do have an onboarding process and this is how I like to work. And if you choose to work with me, this is how it's going to be. And I'm setting the scene and that's good. And I actually try and say to people, even in the discovery call, this is how we onboard. And it's the thing is, if you don't know what your onboarding process is, you can't have those conversations beforehand. And what I realized is when I knew the process that my clients were going to go through in the onboarding process, it actually helped me convert more sales because I was really clear on what our next steps were. And actually what a client, a prospect is looking for is that you have more certainty in the next steps than they do because they have got no idea. So when I was really clear and I was like, and this is what we're going to do. Yes, it might have put some people off and that's absolutely fine. They were never going to be that ideal client for me. But the other people were like, oh, yes, okay. I understand what the next steps are because most people come to us um, for that conversation because they're not happy with the experience they're currently having. So if you can take them and show them what that journey is, it can really make them feel like, yes, you're the person for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And some really, really interesting points there, Joe. There was one word you used to use it a couple of times, which was experience um, as opposed to process. Um, how important do you think that is viewing that onboarding um, piece as, as an experience and not just a process? Absolutely. So for us behind the scenes, it's maybe a tick box. You know, we've got this, 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 and it is a process, but the clients, you want them to feel it as an experience and as a journey and, and feel that they are, you're leaving them after every interaction feeling better than when they joined that call or, you know, that phone call or the interaction they have with you on whatever method that you're speaking to them. So, you know, people don't remember what you say, but they remember how you made them feel. So you do need to make this an experience for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll circle back to that experience piece, Joe, as we go through as well, because I think that's, uh, I think that's really, really interesting, interesting point. Um, you mentioned boundaries, setting boundaries and setting, setting expectations, Joe. How exactly do you go about, go about doing that? Um, and do you think, has, has your experience and your confidence, has, as I'm sure, has grown throughout your career, has it become that little bit easier to start setting these, these boundaries and expectations? Yeah, because the thing is, when we don't set boundaries and people then, you still have the boundaries. You've just not told anyone that you've got those boundaries. So when you're sitting there and the client messages you on a Sunday afternoon and uh, 
and you're getting really annoyed with them because how dare they message you, but you've not told them that you don't, you know, don't want to work on a Sunday. Um, then again, you've got to take ownership that that's your fault that that's happened. If you're emailing people in the evenings, um, but you don't want to work evenings, then um, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not practicing what you preach. So, and you know what, what I've realized is our job as bookkeepers is to have these conversations. And when we set boundaries with our clients, we're teaching them best practice of how we communicate with our clients. And it gives them confidence to do the same in their businesses. So we're imparting like really good business skills with them. And actually, how they receive those, you know, the boundaries that you set. And I don't say it in a way, it, you know, I'm not saying these are my boundaries. This is my list of boundaries. It doesn't come across like that. Um, and, and there's a way you can communicate it. But actually, how they receive it, they're like, oh, OK, that's fair enough. Oh, I wish I could do that in my business. That tends to be how they do. And then and then they may feel, well, actually, how I received that was no, it was fine. I didn't mind. So maybe I'll start setting boundaries for my own business. And it doesn't mean that people don't message me outside of hours. What they tend to do, which has been re which I absolutely love because I'll still have I've got my emails on my phone and I don't you know, I still check in just because I'm nosy or whatever, but I'll read it. And but at the end, they'll say, but I'm not expecting you to call me back or like, please don't look at this. It'll even be in the subject line. Don't look at this until Monday or, you know, because I have set them, but I've set them gently and I've set them in such a way that it's just like, this is how I work. Um, and it's it's just a respect, a mutual respect. And I'll, I'll say to them, you know, and what days are you working? I'm, I want to respect your boundaries too. I work with a lot of salon owners. So it means they work on Saturdays because their shops are usually open. The salons are open on Saturday, but they don't always work on a Monday. They might have an extra day off. So I always speak to them. What day is your day off? Now, they tend to say to me, that's OK, that's my admin day. And that gives me an opportunity to say to them, so what other day do you have off? You need at least two days off a week. And then I can kind of guide them and talk to them about their boundaries. So they in that way they realize that I have boundaries, but I'm coaching them through theirs. That makes sense. So it's a bit of a softer, a softer approach. Absolutely. That makes, that makes a lot of sense, Joe. And I think it's probably something that's easily missed is not only your own boundaries, but the boundaries of your clients in question as well. And um, that two way street piece, which I'm sure is, uh, is going to come out even further uh, as we, as we chat through. Um, you mentioned as part of that uh, um, onboarding process, Joe, you mentioned that would usually include things like, you know, setting boundaries and uh, setting expectations what other elements would generally go into that kind of onboarding process would you have a piece around you know providing clarity and um, you know communication cadences how and how often you communicate with the clients during the onboarding process how would that piece usually look okay so there's so much to do in the onboarding process um and i do have a checklist i think i think i've shared it um, with a few of my members and things, I think there's about 20 points on it. There's quite a lot involved that we've got to get through because you've got the actual technical, you know, the work bit to get sorted. So setting up, it depends on how you work, but we work virtually and we, we're fully digital. So we have to set up the, the software with the client. Um, we have to set up communication channels as well. So um, I, with a lot of my clients, I found that, when I sent an email, it might not get responded to very quickly. Um, and, and then I realized, well, they're not by a computer. My salon owners are standing up, they're in their, you know, they're servicing their clients and they're not sitting by a computer like we are as bookkeepers. So I then started trialing um, WhatsApp with them. And oh my goodness, I was getting quicker responses, but what was, was enabling them to ask me questions as well, because what I realized was that they might think of something, but then by the time they get to sit and open a computer or a laptop, they they had forgotten what it was that they wanted to ask. Or they might have a question that comes to them, you know, you know, when you're lying in bed at night and you think, oh my goodness, what happens if I don't do that? Or what happens if I do that? What's the tax implication? So I found that WhatsApp was really good for them. And um, so we have to set up that. And I set up a group. So I set up a WhatsApp group. I am in it, but then my team are also in it. So it depends on the services that the client is having. So if they've got payroll, my husband, Paul, who runs all our payroll, he's in the group. 
if they're VAT registered. My sister who does the VAT, she's in the group. If they have got year-end compliance, the accountants in the group, if they've got management accounts, you know, we need to have everybody that's related to that that's going to kind of be be there in the group. And that's great for me as well, because it means that I'm not the only person, you know, we have to think we are business owners. And at the, when I've had a when I've had practices in the past and I've been the only person in my business, I didn't really have a business. I had a job that I'd created for myself. And it was kind of hard to be that go-to person for all of them. So as my business has grown and my team has grown, my team know that it's not my responsibility to respond to those messages all the time. Um, it's, 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 I, I might do, don't get me wrong. I might, but it's it's got to be another the client manager who's in charge. It's there on their radar, and it's there. If I if I don't respond, and if they don't know the answer, it's down to them to ensure that that client has maybe just got a um a, a quick response to say we're going to look into it. We'll get back to you, something like that. So communication channels have to be set up in onboarding. Software has to be set up onboarding. Um, anti money laundering uh, regulations have to be dealt with. So you have to make sure that you have received they get um we have an email so it's automated so when they've signed their proposal they get a welcome email and in that email it offers them an opportunity to book in for their first onboarding meeting but it also talks to them there about what they need to provide us with regards to money laundering so that we can do that risk assessment um and and yes yeah, so it sends them the link to be able to book into my calendar to get that onboarding meeting booked in and that first one we tend to have for about an hour so, yeah, you've got all of these elements, but I'm very much aware now I would have in the past if I'd have, I may not have even I wouldn't have had a meeting with them. I can tell you that I didn't have a meeting with them, but not only do I have a meeting with them now, that is the first meeting. It's not the only meeting. And I've realized this, that the different clients have different needs at this onboarding stage. Some of them are coming, you know, some of them have already got software set up and they've already been using digital or cloud accounting. And um, they've been, you know, they're fully engaged and it, all, that setup's much, much quicker. If you've got somebody coming from, you know, someone's been using spreadsheets or just been handing a bag of receipts over, that's going to take longer. So we have that first onboarding and I kind of really, going back to that experience again, I check in with them all the time. How are you doing? Is this okay? A lot of it is me on screens and sharing things and requesting things and getting them to download apps. I have to check in and make sure that have they reached their level of, you know, because a lot of people I work with as well, I don't know how this has happened, but I have a lot of like neurodiverse clients. So I'm always checking in. Have we reached the level where you're done now and you just need to go and sit in a dark room and not talk about these things anymore? So um, we do that. And But every time I finish in that first onboarding, so we've gone through, you know, money laundering regulations, we've gone through communication channels, We've gone through maybe one software setup, maybe two, maybe three. it depends on the client. And we, when we get to the end of that point, the thing I do is explain that the client manager who's also on the call is going to send an email just covering the things that we've spoken about. Maybe I've said, oh, you know, your your ID wasn't right. It didn't have the right thing. Can you send something else? Maybe there's just a few things that the client manager's in the meeting with me making notes. So they'll send them a follow up email. But in that meeting, we set up the next call. And the next call will be 15 minutes long and it will be the following week or a couple of days time, depending on how far we got in that meeting and according to their schedule and diary as well. And then we meet up for 15 minutes every week until they're fully onboarded in the fact that there's no backlog in bookkeeping work and that we are all happy and that they're using our processes and everything's going right. So that's that's how I do it. Fantastic, fantastic. And you mentioned your, um, you know, WhatsApp as a as a communication communication method, uh, which I think is uh, uh, it's really forward thinking. I, I I can't imagine there's a huge amount of WhatsApp being used just now. Definitely, probably could be used a little bit more. Um, but how important do you think, you know, um, especially when you say you work with a lot of neurodiverse clients, and I'm sure you've got clients from all walks of life. How much do you deviate from your let's say your standard onboarding process, how much do you change and flex that depending on who it is that that comes along? Um, I think the actual process, the tick list, the jobs that need to get done, everything on that, like that doesn't change much. 
but the length of the, how many of those little 15 minute meetings is the only thing that really changes. Some people are just very quick, ready to go, and they might only need like the full hour and then one or two afterwards. And other people, not often, but, you know, we might be in onboarding for maybe two months, maybe, you know, that, um, but, to be, and then we, you know, after that, we go on to like the first, step, if we, if they have management um, or cash flow meetings or management accounts, that's the next, they've never experienced those before. So they will become, you know, the next step, but really we've got to get that bookkeeping completely up to date. Um, fully reconciled they're using the systems correctly that is the main focus and it makes me laugh thinking like oh now someone might be in onboarding for a couple of months I'm you know years ago I used to be working with clients and they you know they wouldn't be up to date for like six months or anything we, because we didn't have that communication it really is that is the important thing and and it's it really I think the main thing is the fact that we are taking control of it and we're saying you're going to meet us at this time no, obviously we ask them when they're free but you know this is the next step this is the next step we're leading it and so it makes it so much much a quicker process rather than how I used to do things I'd sign up a client I might say send them an email saying right send us your thing you know send us this and like send them a list of the things they needed to provide us with but I wasn't engaging with them in the process. So again, they felt like they had this massive long to-do list, whereas we are holding them accountable to getting this work done too. Absolutely, absolutely. And you say, you mentioned there, Joe, that you you previously handled onboarding a little bit differently. Um, what was that catalyst for change for you um, to get to this point where you're at just now, where you know it sounds like you've got a really great and efficient onboarding process in place? Um. It's, it's failing in business basically if you don't get this bit right and then you're always moaning about the clients that you have and then you're not ever you haven't got a process to like reprice them and there's scope creep and you know they're not paying you haven't got credit control systems in place so you've got no direct debits in place and they're not paying you it means you make no money it means you can't pay your staff and then it means you don't ultimately have a business or like me end up in hospital having three operations in six months because I'm so stressed out and I just got it wrong and you know and I'm you know I, I I love sharing that because I think we all feel that everyone else is doing things so well I did get it so so wrong I had three really young children as well at the time and I just didn't I didn't know what I needed to do I didn't know no one teaches it to you and that's why I'm so passionate about sharing that now because we all feel like oh, surely there must be an easier way. I remember my other sister, I'm, I'm one of five, so I have a lot of siblings. My other sister was my virtual assistant at one point back in, I don't know, 2013. And she was like, have you picked the worst industry ever to work in? Like this business is so hard. And I was like, I think I must have because like other people managed to make money and I'm doing all these hours and I ended up owing the business money at the end of the year. Like, what is wrong? <laughs> like, um, and I just, I did get it so wrong. But so that's been the catalyst. I kind of went on a journey of thinking that there must be a way to make this work because I really was passionate about the bookkeeping and I knew it could help other people. But until we become business owners ourselves and understand how to make profit and run a business ourselves, then we can't really help our clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's uh, that's really admirable, Joe, that, you know, you'd be so honest to say that um, the catalyst for change was maybe because it didn't work previously. And now that you're in this, uh, um, you know, good spot in terms of your, your onboarding process, you're willing to share it, share it out with other bookkeepers as well. And um, that's fantastic. And I suppose that's the, the key reason why we're always so keen to have you on on these webinars with us, Joe. Um, so that's perfect. Thank you for that. Um, as we move through, um, I won't dwell on this slide. This is a very small bit about free agents. This is just for anyone who may be out there who's not heard so much about free agents because we're just about to fire up our first poll. If you wouldn't mind, Georgia, in the background, if you wouldn't mind, if you can get ready to fire that poll just now. There it is. Thank you very much. Um, we'll spend about 20 seconds. We won't dwell. I'm sure you're keen to hear lots more uh, pieces of, uh, of wisdom from Joe. I know I certainly am. Uh, so we won't dwell here. We'll give it another uh, 10, 10, 15 seconds or so. Um, thank you all uh, who's already answered. Um, anybody else? Feel free to to make your choice there, and we'll we'll keep moving. Um, give it about another ten seconds. 
uh, and then we'll be ready to to crack on. Um, so the next piece that we'll cover off, Joe, is we'll try and get into the nuts and bolts, I guess, that a little bit more, or the actual, um, the meat of the onboarding process that you have. Um, and definitely really keen to understand more about how you view the process because i know you said experience there uh, which is definitely a slight uh, mindset shift i think from uh, from a process so to speak um, and hopefully we'll get to touch on that just a little bit uh, as well um, and that's great that is the poll now finished so we'll move on through um, so during the onboarding stage, Joe, um, I know you said there's, there's lots of things to be done. There's lots of information to convey to clients and uh, clients that are, you know, living in a, in a different in a different world and um, to yourself, of course, they're not maybe sitting at a desk all day as I am as well. Um, but they're up and about, you know, they're in a salon or whoever they may be. And um, how do you approach, I suppose, educating these clients on on what they need to do for their um for success essentially how do you approach that if they if they don't you know exist at a at a computer every day is it you, during that initial onboarding meeting is it recurring meetings you have with them or generally how, how do you approach that yeah so i definitely i do things on zoom um i i meet with my clients on zoom all the time and i think um one of the biggest you know one of the biggest things i realized was that um i think initially when we all started using zoom and I did. I started this practice in April 2019, and Zoom was like revolutionary because COVID hadn't happened. So me meeting clients on Zoom, they were like, they'd never downloaded the app, so they had even to even meet with me for a discovery call was like a learning curve for them. And I had to explain to them about that. Obviously, people understand what Zoom is now. So even that was, you know, revolutionary. And you know, I'll go back to thinking about how I've run practice in the pot before in my local town, and people used to come and meet me physically. You know, I used to have to share with them where the car parking was and things like that. So we always have to explain and be very clear about these steps. So really think about, again, put yourself in your customer or your prospects shoes and think about why they are. Why have they contacted you now? They have not contacted you because they've had an amazing experience and that everything's running smoothly and they're massively profitable and everything's being saved amazingly for their business and their taxes all being done and that they're not doing, there are issues. So your job when you first meet them as well is to really just get to know them. Um, and I, you know, I always, it reminds me, I know I'm talking a lot today, but I am being interviewed, but when I'm on a call with a client, you need to remember you've got two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you're talking. They will tell you everything that you need to know if you ask the right questions and you can help guide um, you guide the conversation. And what you really want to do in these initial stages is find out their pain points and what's been going wrong so far. Then what you need to do is explain how your process and what you do in your services will help them get from where they are now to be in so much more content, happy, not worrying, whatever, whatever the words are that you, they are using, use those words in the opposite to say how you're going to, but they need to, and you're the person, you're the expert, you know how to get them there, but it's going to be, I always say this, you know, it takes two of us. It takes my team. It's going to take you. It might take some of your team and that's fine. We can use some of your team too, if that's the case. Um, but we need to work on this together. I cannot see your receipts. I cannot see what's going on. We are going to have to work at this together. So again, that's another setting the scene about the fact that because in the past, you know, um, I know that people I hear it all the time. My accountant doesn't give me this. My accountant doesn't give me that. I often say, I always as well try and, um, try and help the previous accountant out because I often think it's just the lack of education across you know across the whole industry and across business owners just like we as practice owners don't always know how to run a business business owners don't know how to run a business so I often say to them did you go and ask them for this because I'm also thinking about that bookkeeper or accountant who hasn't hasn't been on this journey too. So I feel for them. I feel for them. Like, did you ask them for this? Now, if they say, oh, I did ask them this, but they don't offer it. Well, that's different. And they're asking for a service. 
But if they go, oh, no, I didn't. I say, well, that's an option. You know, after this, you could always go back and ask them because you're already working with them. And you're, if you're happy with this and this, maybe you could ask them um, about, you know, they often say they don't ever contact me. Well, have you have, have you ever asked for any contact or do they offer meetings or is it a case that they've offered it and you don't want to pay for it? What's you know, what's really going on? So um, I like to really delve into their experiences. I really like to go into their business story as well. Why did they set up? Because there you can hear their goals. If you ask someone what's your goal, they might not be able to say it. But when you ask them when you started, why did you start? What well, they can go back in time and think about it. They might they might have deviated off the plan right now, but you can go back to the beginning and they say, well, have you reached that? And they go, oh no, not yet, not yet. And that's, you know, and then we can adjust the goal and things like that. So I think in the past, I may have just been thinking about the transactions, about getting the receipts, about getting the bank statements, about all of that stuff. But there's so much more to it. You've got to, it's relationship building. And sometimes just like us, it can be really lonely in business and you've got no one to talk to, especially when it comes to the finances of the business. So just creating a space for them to open up, share their story, why they're there and what their frustrations are now. They're giving you all of the clues and basically helping you write marketing content for the future on how they need help and what you can do to help them. And then you can say, right, well, this is the process we're going to go through. And this is why this is so important because People don't understand what bookkeeping is. People don't understand what the difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant is. People are like, why do you need this? Inf like, why do you, you just asking me, I'm just a slave to the receipts, giving you, why do I need this stuff? So if you can make the story of their goals and their troubles and their problems and turn it into, this is how this can work, but this is what you're going to need to do with me and we'll do it together. And I'm going to take you on this journey. It's just a very different experience for them from mostly what they've had before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I really like the the, the pain point questions, Joe. Um, you know, it's something similar that that, that we try and uh, establish when we get new bookkeepers coming on board with ourselves as well. Um, I know you said that sometimes there's a, or you alluded to the fact that sometimes there's a temptation to maybe not get into the why, the, the client's why and the client's previous pain points. Where do you think that uh, temptation to avoid that comes from? Is it sheer the sheer busyness of, of your role? Is it maybe just having never done it before? Uh, where do you think that temptation comes from? Oh, I, I think, yeah, exactly. I think you just never thought of it. Didn't realise it was going to actually help you out and feel a bit nosy as well. I mean, I, you know, I often, I often think, oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. I, I am an open book, okay? I'm an open book. I, if you've asked me a question, I'll tell you the answer, regardless of what it is. And sometimes I think, oh, I say too much, but that's just me. And but I think by being like that and being a bit like I'm genuinely interested about the business owner that I've got sitting opposite me. And I genuinely want to know how I can help them. Um, but again, we've not been taught that that's a good way to communicate. We are very, you know, British and stiff up a lip and can't ask about finances. That's a bit, you know, even though we're the bookkeepers, like it's definitely going to be. But once we break down as well, that barrier around the difference between business and personal finance, that's when the magic happens because no one seems to realize. And I, I didn't, you know, like your business can help serve your personal goals. Who knew? We literally, we, we, because I think we've been brought up in a system where you go to work and it's like that income's not really in your control. I think we still, when we start a business, we think we're earning money for ourselves and we still treat ourselves like a salary earner and don't realize that actually this is the key to being able to pick up the kids from school or go on a holiday in every half term if you wanted to, or, you know, the business can do that for you. And as bookkeepers and accountants, we can ask the questions that help them link, make that link and realize that actually we are there to support them both sides. Now, we're not going to give any personal finance advice. I'm not saying that, but, you know, what the business can do for them can definitely help with their personal and family life. And so I think if we break down that barrier quickly, we can, we can just have more impact. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I guess impact is is what we're all striving to to achieve, Joe. And um, so that's uh, some really, really helpful advice there. Just to give a shout out to Ian in the chat box. Great quote. I think he's referring to your previous answer, Joe. He says, a person who never made a mistake, never made anything. Um, and it feeds, great quote there, Ian. Thank you for that. <laughs> it, it feeds quite nicely into the next question, which is, how do you evaluate, Joe, whether your process is working? Because I know you mentioned at the start of the webinar that it's important to always um, you know, reflect on it, tweak it, make sure that you're always improving it. So how do you, in any, in any given moment, how do you evaluate whether that onboarding process is working for you? A really quick way of looking is how many, how many items are left unreconciled on the bank? Basically, if everything's reconciled and everything's up to date, we aim for daily bookkeeping, but we're currently between weekly, you know, we're definitely more weekly, but we, we as, a, as a team, we want to move towards daily. Um, so if at a given point in the last week, it's all fully up to date, then the onboarding process has worked. If there's lots of outstanding items, then the onboarding process hasn't worked. And something I'd like to bring out there that um, the onboarding process can be brought back in again. So, for example, I, clients are doing great. They've gone through the onboarding process. Everything's working. They're having their monthly meetings, their cash flow meetings, their management accounts. And they have to be really timely with that because we've got to turn these things around. We've got to do this for the month before. So, you know, we're always working on deadlines. We're always moving forward. But sometimes life happens just like it happens to us. It happens to our clients. And so, um, you know, there may be an instances where there's a bereavement or some illness and those that bank rec can give us an indication to they've fallen off the wagon a bit. You know, things are, things aren't flowing as well. And that's OK. So if that happens, we can take the client back into onboarding again and give them that support because life does get in the way and we do get out of habits and systems and processes work and then something happens and we're flawed and we're out of the business for a little while. Maybe they go on holiday. Maybe it's something nice. Maybe Christmas happens, whatever it is. The opportunity as a team is always there to go back and give the client a 15 minute. Let's just get and not to talk about anything other than let's get your receipts sorted. And can I, can we cohort work and I'll tell you which ones to go and look for and just hold you accountable to go into your purse, going into your emails, whatever it is that you need to do. So it's a really great tool in our arsenal now to be able to make sure all our clients are still, you know, falling into line. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's another interesting point, Joe, in terms of that onboarding process that your clients go through it's not a kind of a, a one and done situation you know i'm sure you'll have clients who move through at different paces they'll move through maybe in a different order if other things in life get in the way and they might you know go halfway through and then jump back towards the beginning and and then jump forward um, is that We've also, um just to say there's also other factors involved so obviously when you are you know depending on maybe they've already got software and you open it up and look at it and you think wow okay this is a bit of a mess but we have we are engaged from the first of a month and um you know maybe the first of april and the mess happened before then then my job as well as part of the onboarding is to have really good communication with the previous accountant and set boundaries with them and say look this is where we're starting you need to get this all up to date or maybe you know uh, year-end journals haven't been posted or you know whatever it is that's part of our thing as well so we are dealing with the previous accountant. And I, I like to be really positive, have Zoom calls with them, make sure it's a really good handover. Or some, maybe sometimes we, we have um, clients that have got their own accountant but want to use our bookkeeping team. We'll make sure that we jump on a call with the accountants and make sure that we set boundaries with them as well and let them know this is how we work. So there's lots of, it's it's multifaceted how many people could be involved in this process. And how long the onboarding process takes. You know, we have had one client recently, it's just taken a really long time for their accountants to get last year up to scratch. And it's meant that our management accounts haven't been exactly where we've wanted them to be. But as long as we're the ones saying and communicating in a really nice way, could you help us out with this? We can jump on a call. We can help you with this as well. Um, I think it's rather than in the past, I might have been a bit like, oh, they're rubbish. And just like not being proactive in making it a better experience because now I'm thinking about the client rather than our experience as a team. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And is that quite an important shift, do you think, Joe, to think about it from the client's perspective and, and not just from your own? It's, yeah, it's a massive mindset shift. I was always in a um, woe me, oh, it's so hard, for, it's hard, it's my, oh, it's hard for me, everything's happening to me. Whereas now I think everything happens for me and it's an opportunity to do better. And I'm not always, I'm not like massively always over positive person, don't get me wrong, but I have had a massive mindset shift my, in the fact that I think, okay, something's wrong. What's happened? Where could I have been better? Um, and sometimes maybe I couldn't, maybe it's just something's happened, but most of the time I could have done something a bit better and I'm willing to still be on that learning journey. And that's fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kirsty says, Joe, I've never known you not positive. And so <laughs> I think everybody's feeling your positive energy, Joe. And so oh. yeah, don't say you're so short on that. And um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Joe. Thank you for that helpful insight. And um, we'll move through to a, a similar topic, I suppose, in a different kind of an angle, which is offboarding. And um, so we've spoken, uh, we've spoken a lot about onboarding and we've had some great tips and, and thoughts uh, from yourself. But in terms of offboarding, how important do you think that is? Uh, and how do you address it? This is something that's, has been a bit of a strange thing that's happened recently. Now, with my new positive outlook and client-centric focus, kind of, when a client leaves you, oh, you know, it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. And especially when you think you're doing your best. And honestly, I I lose clients, you know, and this is why I'm I'm sitting here now saying, you know, my way is better than my old way. And that's what I'm sharing. I'm not saying it's the best way because I haven't figured out how to never lose a client. OK, so I, you know, I, I still lose clients and it's really tough because especially when you feel like you're doing your best. It's like, really, you know, I really, really tried here. What could I have what could I have done better? And um, so you need to look at that. But because I'm being more client centric, I think about, OK, from the point of view of the client, they want this. They're feeling icky about this as well. So let's make this a really nice experience for them. So I, of course, let them know that I'm really, you know, sad. And if there's anything more I can do, to be honest, most of the time when we have clients leave, we have already had this conversation and maybe something's not going quite right with their business. And maybe sometimes they've not always listened to our advice or just something in, in out of our control, whatever, something's not going right and they need to cut back. And I wouldn't say we are not the cheapest and that's fine as well. We're not the cheapest and that's fine. So we would have tried to help them out at some point. So most of the time we've got an inkling that this, this client might be on their way in the next few months. And when they let us know, we kind of, we knew it was coming, but I want to make it a really nice experience for them. So I, I let them know I'm really sorry. I say I wish them all the best for the future. Now, how do we help you get onboarded with your next accountant? Thinking back to our onboarding process and how we work with um, clients' accountants, how can we be the best at offboarding and be really proactive and make this as simplistic and straightforward as possible? So we make sure that, you know, can we have the contact details of your new accountant or let them if this is who to contact if they need any details and we make it really quick pain free so my thinking in this is when they go on onboarding with their next accountant or bookkeeper if that isn't a great experience it is nothing to do with us they can see we have been positively engaged and very very efficient in this process now, what's been a surprise is that in the last six months, I've had three clients that have left us and um, they've come back and said, we're not having a really great experience. Could we have another quote again? Now, they may not come back again um, and that's OK. But they're still seeing us as a very positive and I still think they would recommend us to, we might still not be the right fit. You know, we, we might offer a lot of value and maybe that's not what they want at the moment. Okay. So they might want to have different needs and that's fine. But the fact that they reach out, the fact that they're still my Facebook friend, the fact that they're still engaging on my posts and things like that. I'm like, this is okay. It makes the whole process a lot easier 
And I do have a lot of people say, I'm leaving, but hopefully I can afford to come back. And hopefully one day when, when, you know, when I've sorted this bit out, I can come back to you. And that's, and that's okay. So again, it's something where I didn't give onboarding as much thought and didn't have it as a process and hadn't designed it. I, I again, hadn't even thought of the process of offboarding until like quite recently. And then I'm like, wow, this is having a, a good, like a lasting legacy effect. But even though I've left you, it wasn't a bad experience. It was still one of my best experiences. And I really hope that they go off to find someone even better than us. And I'd love to learn from them. That's all fine. But yeah, I think it's it, it's been an interesting and again, a massive mindset shift. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've got one question for you on that, Joe, and then I'll uh, ask a question that Lindsay has posed in the chat box. Um, but in terms of off-boarding, Joe, um, do you think, do you see a kind of a, a direct correlation there between how well you onboard this client with how smoothly you can then off-board them? Does that help, you know, the better that you've onboarded them and everything is, you know, the way it should be, does that help you then off-board them that little bit smoother? I mean, absolutely. You know, when we're off-boarding a client, they might have a couple of weeks of uh, receipts to, you know, get done. And then we're, because we're doing our weekly bookkeeping and everything, and because we've onboarded them so well, we're getting everything up to date. When we hand over to the next bookkeeper or an accountant, I'm like filled with pride with what that, you know, what those records look like. And we know we have everything that they possibly need. We know that we're giving them really We've never had anyone, you know, like I said, now that I'm going back to accountants and saying, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. Um, is it okay if you could do this? We've only really been engaged from this time. You're, it's your responsibility. I've never had anyone come back and ask for anything. They might have come back and said, oh, can we have a copy of a P60 or something like that? But nothing of you haven't done this. And I'm really, really proud of that. And that's maybe something I hadn't even really thought about until you you said that now but I should we should be really proud that no one ever says oh your account your last bookkeeper was rubbish talking about us we it's only been positive so I think yeah I think it is it is really important and um and it just doesn't leave that horrible taste you know of oh I've lost a client and now they've gone on and now they're they they're thinking bad things about me no one's doing that so and at the end of the day we can't control who stays with us forever because their circumstances might change and that's absolutely fine but we can control the experience they have as best as we can absolutely absolutely and another great uh, great quote here from Stephen in the chat box just to round off that that offboarding piece joe Stephen says honesty empathy and understanding the other party's point of view usually makes things amicable and um, so thank you thank you for that Stephen, as well and um, joe we've got one question here in the chat box which i'd love to put to you and it's coming from Lindsay. so Lindsay says how do you approach back work and if your new client arrives with you know a little bit of a mess going on in their books how do you how do you deal with that so how we deal with that is we charge for it. <laughs> make sure you're charging. Um, make sure part of your proposal, you know, we have an alignment fee. So it makes sure that the um, the client is being charged for that bookkeeping work, however far back it goes. Also, if you're taking over from another bookkeeper or an accountant and you haven't got sight of the, doc, um, of the software up front, I charge the alignment fee and say, especially if there's a VAT return or something, or I've got, you know, we've got to sign off the accounts. I need to check all of that. Or my team need to check all of that beforehand, just because, you know, you're leaving them for a reason. So, you know, I want to just double check that first. Um, and if it's all up to date, then I can take that bit of alignment fee off, but make sure whatever any of the year that you are, you know, you are engaged in that you're happy with the quality of the work. So make sure you're charging for it because then you'll be ha much happier at dealing with it. And then what we try and do is with our missing items lists that we give to clients, we don't want, again, it's all about their experience, their individual experience. So I've got a client that I've just started with, they're going to, we've got to go back to the 1st of April. So we will really make sure that we clear down April 1st. You know, we try and, because you know what it's like, the older the receipt, the older the document, the harder it is to find. So we try and clear down April 1st, make sure all of those items are there, then we'll, we'll move into May. Um, we do tend to find that we don't really, you know, pick up too much. I tend to try and point people in the direction of joining us at the beginning of a year, making sure, because I, 
we we will charge for going back to the beginning of the year. So again, and it, it it's and it's hard, especially if they've not got those receipts or anything. So I do try and guide people and say be much better if we start off afresh. A couple of months is fine, maybe up to six months, but we will price accordingly. So if someone wants us to go back and do 11 months worth of bookkeeping, they're going to get charged for it and they're going to have to be able to afford that. Because again, in the past, I used to be like, oh, we'll start with you now. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll get that sorted for you. And then you resent the client because you've not charged for it. And there's usually loads of work to do there. So now that I charge for it, it makes me feel much happier. And I treat it like I treat all of the work exactly the same. But you've got to guide them, you know, can they deal with maybe finding one supplier's invoices at a time? Or can they deal with a month's worth? Or can they deal with a week's worth? How much, you know, how much scope do they have? How much time do they have to deal with this? So really be led by them and maybe get a member of your team or yourself onto a Zoom call with them for 10, 15 minutes to go through the process of finding these things and help them find it. Because maybe they've never had to do this before. How many, I mean, how many jobs I pick up and people say, I just, I just give the bank statements to the accountant. They never, they never ask me for any records or anything. So sometimes you have to really train people and especially educate them in why it's so important to have the records and the, um, the evidence, um, because otherwise they might think, oh, you're just really hard work compared to my last accountant. He was, she was so breezy compared to you. So you have to go through that education piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Joe. Lindsay, hopefully that helps. Let us know in the chat box if uh, if that was was helpful. Which I'm sure I'm sure it was. Um, Lindsay says thank you, Joe. So, oh, so much appreciated all around. Um, Joe, we're coming up on 5 to 12, um, right. which means we've got about four minutes to go. Um, Joe, what I'd love to hear from yourself is, and I'll put you on the spot here just a little bit, what would be a, a webinar without putting somebody on the spot? <laughs> um, so what I'm hoping, Joe, is that you could give us one tip. If you could just give us one tip for onboarding, um, what would that tip be? And I know we've spoken so far today, we've spoken about a bit of a mindset shift from uh, onboarding process to onboarding experience, putting yourself in your client's shoes, you know, tailoring that onboarding journey just a little bit, depending on the client in question. Um, you know, what would that one tip be if you, if you could just share one tip with us? Okay, so exactly that. Going through that client experience, but I'm going to teach you how you create it. Okay. So my, anyone who's in my membership will know that I love a piece of wrapping paper, you know, roll it out and get yourself a wad of post-it notes and um, think about all of the elements of onboarding. Think about, um, you know, that client journey, where are they meeting you at? Where, we, where is it? Are they going to be on your website? Are they going to see you at a networking event? Are they going to see you on Facebook? Where are they? Where are they seeing you? Where are they contacting you? How are you going to respond to them? Do you want them there first? You know, some people are like, oh, I get messages on Instagram. I don't want messages on Instagram. Well, you've got to tell them where you want them to. So maybe, you know, maybe you need to change something in your bio or on your website. How do you want people to connect with you? For me, I like people just to book in a discovery call on my Calendly. And um, and I ask them a few questions and that kind of helps me to understand who they are and how I can help them. And they're booked in my diary then. And I haven't, sometimes they might reach out to me for a few questions beforehand, but most of the time, I hope I've given them enough information up front so that the, uh, the questions are answered. So think about that, map it out, just write on a post-it note, you know, Facebook, networking, whatever it is. How are you gonna contact them back? What, where are you taking them next? You've got to think about this like a funnel. Where are you getting them to? And because you're going to see more people there and then, you know, are you going to have a discovery call with them? What's the point of the discovery call? OK, you're going to give them a proposal and a price. All of these sections, you know, then you've got to think about AML. You've got to think about your software. You've got to think about the onboarding process. Get all of this out of your head. Map, even if you just write post-it notes and don't put them in an order, just smack them all on the on the paper. And then and when you've got everything out of your head that you need to take a client through, um, you know, and how you're going to, you can start like mapping it out and creating a process and a, you know, how, how it flows, how someone's going to flow through that. Maybe do what you do now. And then maybe look at it and think, is that actually what I want? Like, that's what's happening. But I get to choose how this looks. Is this a good experience for them? Okay, let me put myself in their shoes. Does that make sense? I mean, if you're getting frustrated along the way at one of these things, 
well, you've created it. So what are you going to do to change it? How could you how could you change it? And 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 sometimes you, when you do this, you look at things, you think, well, that's obvious. I just need to change that thing that would make things simple. But other times you, you might not know and you might need to think and you might need to ponder. And there might be a bit of software or proposal system or or, you know, technology like Zoom or Calendly or something that might make something help, more helpful. There's so many things out there that you can use. Um, and you might need to implement something. But look at what you're doing now and really just think, is this what I want? Is this what my clients want? How could it be better? And try and design something that you could be proud of. And you know that um, when someone comes in, it's going to give you more confidence in the whole sales process because you know where they're going next. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's fantastic, Joe. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think definitely my biggest takeaway was exactly that. You know, uh, keep in mind that it's your process. Uh, you can change it, you can tweak it uh, and put yourself in your client's shoes as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for that, Joe. Some lovely comments coming in the chat box. Uh, Anne says, excellent, extremely helpful presentation, Joe. Uh, so uh, just to let you know, uh, those lovely comments are, are flowing in as well. Uh, it's time for our second poll of the morning. Georgia, if you wouldn't mind, if you could fire up that second poll. Uh, and as we did previously, we'll let it run for about uh, 30 seconds or until um, everyone's had a chance to, to, give it, to give it an answer. There the poll is just now. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, if you could just hit whichever one feels most applicable to yourself. Lots of answers going in. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we'll give it about another 20 seconds uh, and then we will continue on with the webinar. Um, we're just on about uh, midday, uh, so we're uh, just perfectly on time, um, which is always good to see. I'm sure everyone has a, has a busy day ahead of them as well. Um, just to let you know, uh, before you jump away, I will be doing a live demo, uh, so don't jump away just yet unless, uh, if you want to see that demo, great to see as many people as possible. Um, and that is the second poll of the afternoon finished. Um, uh, of course, there's lots of other ways you can interact with ourselves, lots of other ways you can interact with Joe. Um, shout out to the Six Figure Bookkeepers Bootcamp and all the other great courses that Joe runs as well. Uh, I think you'll agree, based on what we've heard from yourself today, Joe, um, those courses will be incredibly helpful to any bookkeepers out there. Um, uh, so yeah, please take a look and take a look at that as well. Um, a little plug for tomorrow's session. Um, so tomorrow's session is uh, a panel discussion on the fruitful future of uh, bookkeeping. So it'll be great to see as many people along there uh, as possible. Um, anyone who's got their phone beside them on the desk, if you fire up the camera on your phone and point it at this QR code, you will be able to register for that session tomorrow. This QR code will take you to the free agent website. So I'll leave that on here for about another 10 seconds. Um, great comments coming in. Uh, thank you, Carol. Carol, this is a great session and very informative. Nikki says fab session. Um, Claire says um, there's a free chat you can share ICB meeting tonight. ICB meeting tonight. Um, look in the chat box if that takes your interest. Um, that's a message there from Claire. How did it look in the chat box? Suzanne says thank you so much, Joe. Very very helpful. Um, that's great, Joe. It was a real pleasure to have you on today. Uh, especially I know from from my personal first webinar, I couldn't have asked for uh, or I couldn't expect to have a nicer person on with me. Uh, you've made it really, really, uh, really, really nice to be here. Thank you so much for your helpful uh, tips, uh, your advice, uh, and yeah, for anyone out there who wants to to catch up with Joe, uh, please reach out to her um, uh, and pop along to the Six Figure Bookkeeper website as well. Um, any final final words for yourself, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a community, a free community on Facebook, the Six Figure Bookkeepers Club. It's a group, free community. Please feel free to join us there. Um, and I host the Bookkeepers podcast as well. It's been really lovely. Well done, Rob. You did a fantastic job. I love it. So you do what sometimes it's really hard to answer questions, but you it was so um in a lovely order, and I was able to, yeah process my thoughts whenever I come onto a webinar literally my mind goes blank and I think I don't know what I'm going to say I have no idea who I am what I do and then you ask some really great questions so I was able to answer them so thank you very much you did great thank you Joe much appreciated. it's easy to ask good questions when you've got such a insightful speaker like yourself Joe so thank you so much for that um Joe if you want to nip away um, and yeah. feel feel free thank you so much again and enjoy the rest of your day thanks um, a lot. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else that's still out there and waiting for this live demo, we shall get to it. Uh, we'll get to it just now. Um, give me just a split second and I'll fix my screen sharing. Um, bear with me just for a moment. And this is the dreaded silence uh, during the webinar. Um, here we go. Um, so you should be able to see my screen just now. Um, give me just a moment. Um, 
So the demo that I'll run today, uh, it'll be about a five minute demo. Um, but what it'll do is hopefully it'll give you a little bit of an insight into free agent itself. If there's anyone out there who's not seen the software before or just generally curious as to what exactly it looks like, uh, hopefully that's something I can uh, I can help you with just now. Um, so without further ado, here is what we call um, the practice dashboard. Now the practice dashboard uh, becomes available to any free agent partner. So the practice dashboard, essentially what this is, is this is a centralized area to be able to view your free agent clients. So in this case, what you're seeing on the screen just now, this is of course a, a demo or dummy practice dashboard. And you can see on here, if you follow my uh, mouse cursor, you can see that I've got two uh, demo clients that are sitting on my practice dashboard. Uh, and this is my centralized view. So for example, if I had 10 free agent clients, all 10 will be listed here. If I had one free agent client, the one will be listed here as well. Um, along the top of the screen, we can see it's a green color and green indicates that we're in the practice dashboard as opposed to the client account. Um, what we'll do just now is we'll nip through to the actual client account, which I'm sure is um, probably what you're most interested in seeing. So to do that, what I will do is I'll hit this little button here, which is switch to. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm switching to the client account. So I've hit switch to. And now what this brings us through to is the client account. So you'll see a green color along the top of the screen. And this green color indicates that we're in the client account and we're no longer in that practice dashboard that we were on previously. Um, this is the overview page. And this is the page you'll always be greeted with when you go through into the client account. An important note to make is that this is the exact same screen that your client would see uh, when they're logged into Frasian from their site. So you know that you're looking at the same screen, you're looking at the same information. So any questions that your clients have, um, they can either reach out to us or if they reach out to yourself, you know that you're looking at the same information. Now, the overview page is essentially a snapshot of this particular client's account uh, at any given moment in time. Um, so as we scroll down, what you'll hopefully start to notice is that free agents is designed with simplicity in mind. So what we try to do is develop a software that's so simple and easy that your clients are able to engage with it. And hopefully what that means is the information that they input into the software is of better quality. And hopefully that makes your life a little bit easier when you log in to do your piece from your site as well. So lots of white space and um, lots of white space, lots of simple terminology. So we try to steer clear of, of technical jargon that those clients may not be familiar with. So simply simply put, green is money in, red is money out. Um, and I think most people who, who log in here um, would have a, have a fair idea as to what exactly is, is happening based on the terminology. As we scroll down, we can see the tax timeline, which is a relatively unique feature to free agent. Um, we also can see our profit and loss. We can see invoices that are open or overdue. We can see estimates, projects, and time slips. As we scroll down, we can see a snapshot of our business bank account that's linked to this client account. And um, we can see the balance that's currently in there. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we can see things like expenses and bills. These tiles are movable and editable, so I could move that tile to here. If I wanted to, I could swap this tile over here and I can configure that any way that I like, whatever is most helpful for myself or for the client. Along the top of the screen, you'll see that it is a blue color and that blue color, as I said, indicates we're in the client account, but it also allows us to dive into any of these areas that we see on the overview screen. We can dive into them in a little bit more detail. We can also dive into them by clicking on any of these tiles beneath, but for the purpose of the demo, I will use the, uh, I'll use the, the bar at the top of the screen. So for example, uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'll show you how easy it is to create an invoice. Um, so your client could do this on their side as well, on the mobile app. Um, so shout out to the mobile app as well. So as always within the free agent software, what you'll see is that a green button indicates to create something new or to input new information into the free agent software. So in this case, on the top right-hand corner, I can see the green button, which says add new invoice. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and hit that. Now, what that allows me to do is it's gonna allow me to create a really professional looking invoice and it'll allow me to do it in probably 30 seconds or less. So the first thing I'll do is I'll select the contact in question. So in this case, we'll create this invoice for Paul. If I wanted to, I could link it to a project and free agent can track projects individually so you can see profitability and bits and pieces like that 
As you scroll down, you'll see we use global uh, invoice sequencing. So this invoice reference will increase by one every time I go to create an invoice. I can select my invoice date and I can backdate that or I can forward date it. So if I forgot to send this invoice out last week, I could backdate it. If I know I'll be away in, um, you know, Tormali Nos next week, I could forward date it instead as well. Um, I can dictate the payment terms. So in this case, if Paul isn't uh, so fantastic at paying his invoices, I could choose, you know, a different payment um, payment term. So for these purposes, let's just go with 30 days. We support multi-currency. So you could choose any of these currencies you like. Uh, in this case, let's stick with pound sterling. This additional text box um, will appear at the bottom of invoices. So what I see some um, users use this for is something like, uh, you know, please follow us on Instagram and their Instagram handle. It could be anything that you choose. Um, you can fill in that box there as well. As we scroll to the bottom, I'm going to hit create new invoice. And what that's going to do is it's going to create this uh, extremely professional looking invoice for me. And it does it really quickly. You'll see that in this case, for this um, dummy client in the top left corner, it's pulled through the logo. So this is just a dummy logo, of course, um, but it will pull through the client's logo that they've up uploaded to their free account. It also pulls through all of the legally required information that we need as well. So we don't have to worry about that. All we need to do now is add the body of the invoice itself. And we can do that as always by hitting that green button, add invoice item. So in this case, um, what I'll do is I'll add the details and we'll say, uh, as this is a, a paint, uh, a dummy account belonging to a painter, we'll put in painting for kitchen, the unit price. Uh, I don't know how much a, a painter charges, but let's go with that. And we'll hit create and finish. Now what that's done is it's created this really, really good looking invoice for us. It's pulled through that body of the email that I need, and this invoice is ready to be sent. As you can imagine, we can send that by email, which is the most common way. We'll hit send by email just here at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Or if we wanted to hand deliver this invoice, we would hit save as PDF um, on the invoice just now. And then I can manually mark this invoice as sent at the top of the screen, which I'll do just now. That invoice is now sent. If I nip back to the overview page by clicking on the top left corner, what we'll see is this invoice is now appearing within our invoice section. Um, so that invoice we sent out just now is this one here, invoice number 880. We sent it out to Paul Jones. It's June about a month because I put a 30-day 30, 30 excuse me, payment terms on there. Um, and that is as easy as it is to create an invoice. Um, that's all I'll go through today for the purposes of the demo. Um, but please, anyone who did indicate that they would like uh, to learn a bit more about, uh, about Reagent, um, this is generally what a, what a trial of the software would look like. Anyone out there who has had their interest peaked, feel free to pop onto the website and request a, a trial as well. Um, and here we go. The third poll of the afternoon uh, gives you an opportunity to indicate what your preference would the, be there as well. Um, we'll let the poll run for just a couple of seconds until everyone there has had a chance to answer. Um, but essentially, what Free Agent offers, uh, we offer lots of things, but by way of a trial, what we offer is a two-week trial. So you could play around with the software yourself, just as I have done just now. Um, and you can see, is it something that could work you know, for yourself uh, and for your practice? Waiting on just a few more responses here on the poll. We'll give it about 10 more seconds and then we will wrap this poll up. Um, it's been a great session today. Hope everyone enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I think you'd all agree, Joe gave us a, a huge amount of insight and incredible, uh, incredible um, information that we can hopefully all use uh, as, we, as we go forward. What I'll do is I'll stop sharing uh, the demo just now. Um, we're back. Um, back in the main screen. Um, that's the end of the webinar and um, it's the end of the demo as well. Thank you all so much for coming along. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Ian. Um, lots of lovely comments. Much, much appreciated. Um, and thanks everyone for, for your lovely comments in the box throughout. Certainly put me at ease. Um, so I really do appreciate that. Um, thank you all for coming along. Don't forget, tomorrow is the final session of Bookkeeper Boost Week. It's a panel discussion. It's definitely not one to be missed. It'll be really, really interesting. So please jump on to the website, register for that session tomorrow, and we'll hopefully see as many of you there as we possibly can. Um, but for now, um, thank you so much for coming along and hope everybody has a good rest of the day and have a nice weekend when it comes as well. Thank you all.